Um, good morning, everybody. Um, nice to be back again for the second day. Um, I represent the Growth, Enterprise, Employment and Livelihoods Project, a USAID-funded five-year program. Um, we are we just got our registration in Somaliland, um, so we look forward to working here for over the next uh, four years. Okay. We, we take a holistic approach um, to our development activities. We're going to be essentially focusing on the agriculture, uh, dairy and renewable energy sectors um, over the next four years. As you'll see on the, the slide there, we take an approach that tries to link lots of things together. So for us to achieve some economic growth here in Somaliland, we're going to be looking at investment and access to finance. And I have one of my colleagues here, Halima, who is our investment advisor. We'd like to provide some assistance to enterprises that are looking to get investment and provide some facilitation in that process. So if there's any enterprises that need some support in developing feasibility studies um, or require some technical assistance or they need to get their finances um, into in, uh, up to date um, and are looking for some investment, uh, we're going to provide that level of activity. Um, also, on the infrastructure side, we have a... Um, small pool of money where we can provide some infra small scale infrastructure support that's going to be beneficial to uh, a local community to be able to um, develop their agricultural sector. Um, we're looking at productivity, so increases in yields of various crops at the moment. Um, we're going to be looking at the fresh fruits um, and sesame sector uh, here in Somaliland. Uh, then we have knowledge, trying to increase people's understanding of both markets, how to um, get involved in the agricultural sector. Um, and bring in some expertise where required. Uh, we have the business environment, uh, trying to improve um, business environment, the finance, access to finance, um, access to financial institutions, um, enabling people to grow that way. And then the last one, um, introducing technologies. Um, that's one way which we really feel that they can be beneficial to uh, Somaliland, is to look at some best practices from other parts of the region um, and introduce new ways of doing things. And hopefully that will lead to increased incomes, um, employment, living standards, and youth and women engagement, which is some of our targets. Uh, so some of the activities that we may be getting involved in, um, demonstration plots and training for people, um, providing people the opportunity to produce high yield uh, crops, um, exposure to some of the best practices that again come from some of the regions. Um, I've mentioned the investment facilitation, um, technical support in various areas, um, technology demonstrations. So these are some of the kind of activities that we're going to be involved in here with the sectors that we're going to be working with. So these are the ones we're looking at for Somaliland. Uh, fresh fruit, we're particularly looking at guava and mango. Um, small but perhaps uh, potential uh, sesame sector, dairy and also fisheries. And we also have our fisheries advisor Andy here and our agricultural um, expert uh, Mohamed Sherdon. So they're in the room. If you would like to have a chat with them afterwards, we can certainly make some introductions. In terms of our investment support, um, we are going to be assisting on the one hand with uh, people that are seeking investment. And as I've mentioned, there's various ways that we're going to approach that. Understanding, first of all, what the needs of the business are um, and how we can get you to the stage where an investor may be interested um, to have some, either putting some money in or getting an equity stake in that. Um, and you'll see some of the op areas there, organizational capacity assessment, financial modeling and forecasting, areas where you may need some support. Um, and then at the same time, we'll be in identifying some investors um, and undertaking a matchmaking process. We will have a small grants fund um, that may be able to provide some support to you um, and do some risk mitigation uh, and help you move forward. Um, so you'll see at the bottom some of the areas that we'll be looking at, the processing, the packaging, introduction of technologies, um, su supply chain expansion. Um, there are, those are my colleagues. And the binoculars are there because we're looking for you. We'd like to uh, talk to you, um, both potential investors that are looking for opportunities in the agriculture and fishery sector, but also those people who are looking for investment support. I know a lot of my other colleagues are also providing support um, in the area of investment, and uh, we'll hopefully be working very closely with them to be able to do that. 
Thank you, Alan. Uh, next one. Yeah, we'll have a seven, ten minute presentation and then at the end we'll take some questions. So we'll give the podium now and uh, David. Uh, so there's been about a one year hiatus between the uh, older project uh, and the newer one. I'm going to concentrate on the, the catalytic fund component, that is the financing component of the project. The financing component of the project on, uh, previously was known as the Somaliland Business Fund. Um, it uh, provided grant financing to um, 175 uh, Somaliland businesses. Um, and the grant financing was matched by investment from those businesses themselves, plus some contributing investment from outside. Uh, the project uh, dispersed uh, close on $10 million um, by the time it finished, and uh, it uh, uh, created approximately uh, 2,000 jobs. Uh, it mobilized approximately uh, $20 million in uh, outside finance. Um, and uh, it had uh, fairly good results in terms of output increase. Uh, of the total of 175 projects that uh, got grants, uh, approximately two-thirds of those were regarded as successful projects, and one-third were l less than successful, or they mostly achieved um, some, uh, some, some uh, success. Um, the new project, uh, which we call now the Somaliland Business Catalytic Fund, to differentiate it from the old one, um, which has just got going, has a similar target, but it's uh, going to be responsible for addressing the whole of the Somaliland uh, peninsula. That is to say, Somaliland, um, the, the Greater Somalia Republic, and uh, Puntland. Uh, and the amount of money available, approximately $10 million for grants, uh, will be spread around the three those three regions. So one third of those funding, that funding will be available for Somaliland. The model is similar to the previous project, but we've learned some uh, quite uh, tough lessons um, all the way through uh, of how to best to operate within uh, this environment. And uh, one of the major lessons we learned was that uh, giving of funds alone is not enough. Uh, because there is a shortage of uh, support infrastructure in the country, especially on the business development services side and the technical services side. So, for example, there's a, there's a lack of uh, basic repair and maintenance facilities uh, in the country. Uh, for example, uh, if your boat breaks down and you have to send it to Djibouti to, to get fixed, uh, or you have, to send, you have to bring in technicians from abroad, to do repairs on, say, an engine. These kinds of things are not available. They're becoming available slowly, but they're not available. So there's a major, major uh, gap in the technical assistance area. Business development services are also at a fairly rudimentary level. And uh, a number of linking sectors, uh, which are supposed to help business move, are also at a rudimentary level, especially the financial sector. I, I, I've not a, a lot of you are aware of the fact that uh, we don't have many banks in the country, commercial banks. The commercial banking sector is not really, uh, has not really got developed yet for various reasons. Uh, and so one of the things that the catalytic fund is supposed to do is not only catalyze investments directly through reducing risk to the investor and to outside finances, but also to encourage uh, the banking sector to start moving by lowering banking risk. So if we lower banking risk by uh, providing grants, then we hope that some of the banks, such as Dabshil or Salama, um, who are not exactly commercial banks but are beginning to look at term lending, would be interested in, in cooperating, contributing with us. So the project has a number of uh, uh, targets, a number of objectives, apart from uh, simply uh, investment. It has an uh, objectives of trying to mobilize the uh, business environment as a whole and therefore links up with the other parts of the World Bank's project. So one of the major uh, lessons learned from the previous Somaliland Business Fund was that um, we can't just provide cash. Uh, we also need um, backup uh, technical support. 
So it was decided that we, in, the, in this project, we would uh, uh, bring in a special technical assistance support facility. So on the part of the project which I'm interested in, uh, or rather which I'm working on, we now have two units. One is going to be the fund, which uh, is the successor of the Somaliland Business Fund, and the other is going to be a special technical assistance unit. And today we have the two gentlemen here, Percy and George, uh, either of whom are responsible for the management of those two units. So having made that introduction, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to hand over directly to the two guys in charge of these units. Thank you. Thank you, David. Sorry. <laughs> I think everybody's awake now after that. Um, my name is Hersi Farah. I'm the deputy team leader for the Somali Business Catalytic Fund program, as um, David has just stated. I represent the company DAI, which stands for Development Alternatives Incorporated. Uh, it's a large and uh, international uh, development agency that is uh, responsible for a lot of international dollar programs across the world. Um, my primary responsibility, as David stated, is that um, is to manage the grants fund. There is somebody above me, uh, a team leader called Tim Bergstrom, who couldn't be here today and has asked me to, um, to talk about the program uh, on his behalf, and he sent his apologies. Um, I'd like to start by saying thank you to Shirako for um, hosting this uh, investment forum. I think it's been successful so far, and uh, we thank you for inviting us. Um, I don't really have to speak too much about the grants program because I see a lot of familiar faces here, particularly applicants, uh, not only for this round in terms of the, um, the fund, but also previous applicants from previous programs that have taken place in the past, such as the Partnership for Economic Growth program that was um, funded by USAID and um, the former Somaliland Business Fund. Um, I just wanted to make a, a brief distinction between the previous iteration of the World Bank program and this one. Um, this particular fund program is being implemented across the entire Somali Peninsula. So that means we're holding uh, not only sort of regional um, competition um, in Somaliland, but we're also doing it in Puntland and South Central. And that, as you can imagine, presents uh, a lot of logistical um, issues in terms of um, implementing this program. Uh, what's relevant here is really more the Somaliland um, piece, shall we say. So in terms of the entire fund, which is about between 10 and 11 million, uh, a third of that is, has been allocated for this region. Um, I let me talk a little bit about the, the process and where we are right now. Um, the the deadline or the submission deadline date was the 8th of September. And I'm pleased to say that we've received over 600 applicants just for this round. We anticipate to implement two to three rounds uh, during this two-year program. And uh, having worked sort of in this field uh, for the last four or five years, I'm delighted and I'm sort of uh, encouraged by seeing the continuous uh, engagement from the the local private sector and the entrepreneur community in our programs. So um, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, in terms of the process, what we're going to do right now is we're going through the registration process. We're letting every applicant know what their registration number is. And then we will get back to each applicant as to uh, the success of their application. What we hope to do um, is by the end of, or so to say, middle of October to end of October to announce the shortlisted applicants for this region. And subsequently, what happens is uh, we will do a workshop. And for those who have been shortlisted, and give them an idea and as to how to prepare a full business proposal. Because at this stage, we've only invited concept notes, which comprise of 45 pages, and giving sort of an overall general overview of what their business and their project is about. Um, after that, the grantees are selected uh, once we'd have the full business proposals and essentially the implementation process from a project implementation um, aspect begins. 
Um, usually that takes between five to six months. So as I said earlier, we're hoping that we can do two to three rounds across the, uh, the two years of this program. Um, and I think essentially that's it really. Um, I invite any questions regarding the program later on. And uh, again, I'd just like to thank you uh, for your participation today. And we look forward to your questions later on. Um, thank you, Hersi. Thank you, Philip and uh, uh, Shiraka. My name is uh, George Wake. I'm the team leader for what we're calling SMEF. It stands for the Somali um, Small and Medium Enterprise Facility. And uh, it will be good for all of us to always remember the facility bit because what we'll be doing is facilitation. Uh, I, I'll be explaining this in a bit. Um, in, in very short... Is it that I have a very deep voice or what? Um, in very short order, uh, I'll just explain uh, what the SMEF has been set up to do, uh, what we've been able to achieve uh, this far, and what we are looking to do in the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, like Philip explained, uh, we are funded by the, uh, the World Bank, but MEF is implemented by uh, an organization called BDO, uh, which is a reputable uh, consulting firm based in the UK. We are working in a consortium, and we have as our key partners uh, run IP Global, which is supporting us a lot. Uh, in terms of uh, vendor uh, monitoring and uh, impact evaluation. We also have uh, the partner, uh, Spark, which is uh, supporting us in understanding uh, the local landscape. They have a lot of experience uh, uh, locally. Uh, and then the SMEF as a facility is, is coordinated basically by, by those three consortium partners. Um, what we are looking to do is to support uh, SMEs in uh, technical assistance and the provision of business uh, development services. Uh, we all know that it is not sufficient to get grants or get the money. There is much more that requires to be done in, in order to grow a business or implement a, a, a business project. And uh, the way we are going to do this is we have uh, a target of reaching out to about uh, 1,500 SMEs in general. Um, 300 of these will come through the process of uh, the catalytic fund. So we will be supporting businesses that have applied uh, to get funding from the catalytic fund. Uh, the first step would be supporting them to clarify and sharpen their, their, their business plans so that they can go to the next stage. Uh, the second bit will be uh, supporting them, technical assistance, while they are implementing uh, uh, the grants. Uh, we have another arm. We'll be looking at other SMEs which might not have passed through the, the Catholic Fund, not so many of them, and we'll be giving them what we are calling one-on-one um, uh, -on -one uh, business support and, and technical assistance. All this will be demand-led. And uh, the way we'll do it is, first of all, understand what the problems are and then design uh, the, the, the interventions that we'd want to, to work out with you. Uh, we want to do this through working with a network of business development providers uh, and, where possible, local business service providers. So uh, one of our big jobs is to uh, build the capacity of, of BDS providers and then link them up to, to, to the needs of the SMEs. Um, so far, we have done a call for expression and we have received uh, numerous applications from Somali business service providers, about 200 of them. We are going through uh, the selection processes to see who are they, that who, who, who we could work with. Uh, we've also, uh, are con on a continuous basis, inviting uh, SMEs through uh, our website, especially, 
to tell us about their problems, uh, uh, technical gaps, and based on this, we are going to be able to design uh, 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 interventions. Uh, this is about it. So uh, the first things that we are going to do is conduct some basic induction process for the uh, BDS providers, just in preparation for uh, how they will interact with the, with the, with the SMEs, how they will uh, um, uh, identify the gaps, how they should be address them, and how, again, we'll be able to work with them and so on. Now, facilitation, again, I come back to facilitation. The whole idea is we are not going to give uh, full subsidy. We expect that SMEs, uh, because they have identified they have gaps, uh, should be able to first, you know, share with the services that we'll be giving. We also want to make it very independent that SME get to select the BDS providers they need to work with, just making it a little bit uh, uh, democratic. So going forward, we will be working with SDC here, uh, first of all, to support the businesses coming through the, the first application. And uh, later on, I think in two months' time, we should be able to start applying the TA. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, next, I'll introduce Judith. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Judith Otieno, the UNDP Gender Program Analyst. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today, and I want to thank uh, Shurako for the kind invitation and for hosting this event. I, comm I commend the organizers for focusing on Somaliland. I see this as a natural development, one that goes hand in hand with increasing contribution of the different regions and countries to global growth. Uh, UNDP Economic Development Program in Somaliland is focusing on increasing strategic livelihood opportunities and improving natural resources management. Uh, this will ensure poverty reduction through improved livelihood, decent work, equitable and sustainable economic development. Uh, the country of peace is supporting the formulation and implementation of strategic and economic development policies with focus on small and medium enterprises for inclusive growth. Uh, uh, the country of peace also looks into environment and natural resources management in a sustainable, equitable, gender responsive manner in order to improve livelihood of people, enhance food security, uh, coping with the climate changes and reduce uh, poverty uh, through formulation of policies, capacity development, and implementation of strategic interventions. We are also focusing on strengthening economic foundations at the local community level by empowering uh, the people to analyze, participate in, and advance recovery and development of local enterprises. Um, in relation to establishing long-term employment opportunities, UNDP is looking into value chain analysis of various sectors of the economy, providing training to relevant stakeholders on value chain methods and validation with industries, uh, stakeholders, and project partners that will lead to a value chain implementation strategy. Uh, the UNDP program supports vocational training towards skill development and is focusing on engaging target beneficiaries by rehabilitating productive infrastructures. Um, uh, finally, um, it's normally say that um, show us women's economic empowerment and we'll show you the fastest, most uh, sustainable routes to development on Earth. Um, gender equality and women empowerment is very key to UNDP programming as a strategy to achieve sustainable development. And this is well articulated in Sustainable Development Goal 5. Um, on this, UNDP is focusing on creating an enabling economic environment for women through skills development by providing scholarship for tertiary education for women. Uh, 
and gender responsive uh, value chain analysis. Uh, the private sector institutions will be engaged through advocacy and dialogue forums in the process of gender transformational sectoral policies and practices to open up uh, more spaces for women to engage them as entrepreneurs and as employees. Uh, we also uh, focusing on capacity building support to enhance women's employment opportunities. I thank you. Thank you, Judith. Next uh, will be uh, Dr. Abdi Osman from DIB. Good morning, everybody. I apologize for not sitting with the band because it was congested for me. And I just opted for presenting here, if you don't mind. Yeah. And the second uh, information that I want to uh, share with you is that I was commissioned in the last 15 minutes to make a presentation on any mishaps. Uh, sorry, any mishaps uh, is not uh, it's, it's from my side. Yeah. So, 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 to start, yeah. Teams, I, I represent teams promoting inclusive markets for Somalia. Somalia is with natural list. So that means the project uh, and uh, the project has been completed. Can you go ahead? So the program is also directed towards private sector development. Uh, it takes the market systems approach, as I would say, it's uh, making markets work for the poor. It's uh, started, uh, it has 10 six months duration, it's uh, funded by UK, by Guida, uh, and the UK. So, thank you, thank you. Actually, uh, because I'm not a politician, I, I, I'm not accustomed to talk to Mike, so, so. So, it's implemented by DAIA, Development Alternative Systems Incorporated, uh, and it's, uh, al it's aligned to the economic pillar, as in the surveillance uh, facial arrangement. Go ahead, please. So, I think the underlying principle of PIMS is, uh, I've just tried to formulate this, I added this to the original presentation to make it conceptually clear to all of us. So we know that small-scale producers uh, like farmers and pastoral leases uh, are very poor in the sense that they, are not, they have no access to, to the market, yeah? So the program is trying, in order to uh, make these uh, small producers as well come out of poverty, we have to do something. Yeah? They have to increase their productivity by uh, providing them input supplies in agriculture, like veterinary medicine, uh, veterinary drugs, like feed, like uh, uh, extension services. And they also need some information uh, because market information is the, is the, is the asymmetric. If market information is asymmetric, then they cannot also be competitive at the market. Yeah? So they need information. They need also also improve the technologies and, and uh, improve the product, production practices. Yeah. So there, there's also a number of other value chain actors in the, in the whole system, like traders, uh, consumers, and there should be a, a close coordination between all these value chain actors. So there should be a value chain governance. That's the, that's the term we use. And the, the kind of relationship uh, between those value chain actors must not be exploitative, but it should be based on trust and on, uh, on, on collaboration, yeah. Go ahead, please. So these actors, functional foundations, uh, is what we know as market system, yeah. That's what the market system is. The market system consists of a core function, uh, value chain, and supporting functions, yeah. So the famous approach is uh, taking a market system approach by taking all these factors into consideration, yeah. Ah, okay. So those are just introduction, but I just can provide. So go ahead, please. So to overcome these constraints, PIMS uh, aims to evaluate a thriving network of interconnected units. So many units to work, that's what it's called. So all value chain actors should be put in, uh, in, in, in a kind of relationship that uh, uh, that uh, benefits all actors yeah, in the chain. Yeah. Uh, so, we, we, for example, input providers should understand, uh, should have a value proposition in making their services to the poor, will make them more uh, rich, yeah. uh, they, will be, they, will be, uh, they will become more with the profit, yeah. Go ahead. So, 
this aims to emphasize the development of input targets because usually this is a serious constraint. Like animal production is really seriously constrained by lack of product and lack of markets. And uh, for example, giving those input suppliers a jump start in uh, training how to uh, procure inputs and uh, availing those inputs to the producers is, is, is the key uh, aspect of the green subject. Okay, so let's come to our, to our program now. So, I, so just what I was trying to explain all the time is this, uh, this uh, condensing this slide. Is, uh, all these actors are going to participate in one way or the other in the markets. Yeah? So uh, the, whole, uh, the whole philosophy is that these people should be uh, made accessible to the market. They should uh, be uh, uh, active participants in the market. Yeah? Okay, that's that's how the whole principle is. Uh, so the, the project in uh, in 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 detail. Go ahead. The total project is twenty five million. Uh, these are the impact targets of the project. You can see all of them. It's really ambitious. It can be achieved. Although it sounds very ambitious, but that's what we are achieving, uh, aiming to achieve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the project. Encompasses all Somalia uh, proper uh, in Somaliland. All the sectors were studied uh, in the assessment period. Uh, Constructing uh, uh, as aspect is also with this. Uh, the findings were validated, and so those were the sectors that were uh, selected for the different uh, for Somalia and Somaliland. Somaliland and this land is the medical. Uh, is the key sector, sub-sector. In uh, South Central is the uh, sesame and woodland species as well. So since uh, the dairy sector is the focus of the intervention in Somalia, and we go a little bit in detail. So this division of the growth, uh, as we're increasing uh, the, the productivity of life of, uh, of milk, because milk is uh, experiencing uh, increasing demand, and uh, I look as well. meat is local demand in milk unless we raise the productivity. Yeah. So uh, once we increase the, product, uh, the milk productivity, then we at the same time increase the income of the producers, the small the parcels and the agro parcels. Those are the objectives of the sector intervention. Milk fields are increasing through increasing animal nutrition and health. Uh, spoilage, milk spoilage, usually because of this plastic uh, cherry cans that we use in milk transport, should be eradicated, eliminated because almost 30 percent of the milk, almost 30 percent of the milk is used for spoilage, I mean. and we have to improve also the food environment by providing as extension and, and training and all these uh, improving development services. Okay. Okay. Uh, the cash flow work is also a, a cross cutting issue because, in order to um, uh, make more people as well access the markets, the, the roads to the market should also improve through cash flow work intervention. Yeah. That's uh, a component of the previous project. Thank you, and now I'll give the mic to Miriam. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Miriam Horsmeyer. I'm working for Oxen Nove. And I hope in the meantime, my presentation is going to start up. Um, I would like to introduce, first of all, uh, the Oxen family. It's an organization of now 19. You can go to the next slide. It's an um, organization of 20 affiliates, which means that there are 20 uh, NGOs in more than southern countries that are a member of the Oxfam family. And one of them is Oxfam Netherlands, and we call ourselves Oxfam Novit. 
We're there to mobilize the power of people against poverty. And all together with the 20 affiliates, we're working in 94 countries with uh, local, national, and regional partners. Um, why I'm here, I am asked to present a work in progress uh, project. I would like to thank uh, Shiraku also to give me the possibility to present this project while I'm the first time in this country. And I'm here for the second day and I'm already uh, in a position to introduce you to a project which I'm the global manager of and I'm very excited about. It. So thank you for that. Um, work in progress is a, a project in three countries, uh, Egypt, Nigeria, and Somaliland, um, and it's based on three pillars. Um, one of them is the skills building of youth. So we're training youth in employability skills, in um, uh, ICT skills, I come back to that later, um, to be better prepared to enter the job market. The second pillar, it's all about small and medium enterprises development. So we're working on the demand side. We think that if small and medium enterprises grow in quality, they will grow and need more people, so we are creating jobs. That's the vision behind it. And then the third pillar is about the enabling environment. So we would like to influence in a positive way the environment so small and medium enterprises and also youth can have better access to the job market small and medium enterprises can have access to finance. Um, so that are the three pillars where it's based on. Sorry, we are financed by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs for three years, and it's the, the total budget is 7.5 million euros. I don't know what it is in dollars, but it's slightly the same on the moment, I think. Um, and so uh, that's briefly about the whole project. Go to the second one. The, I think the strength of the project is that we're working with four alliance partners. That's why you see Work in Progress Alliance as a, um, as a um, um, how do you call it? A logo. Thank you. Um, there's VC for Africa on the program. If you look at it carefully, today there was um, Thomas, one of my colleagues from VC for Africa, that would present, but because I was flying in, he asked me to take over and to present the whole project. VC for Africa stands for Venture Capital for Africa, and they're working together with Innovate Ventures uh, to empower startups and connect them hard to hard and soft capital. Then there is Butterfly Works, also a Dutch organization, and they are going to work with uh, Shakodan on ICT trainings. They're going to set up uh, hard garbage, and I think within the coming months you will hear about it much more if you're from Hargeisa and based in Hargeisa. Um, hard garbage is a school where young people uh, can learn basic IC ICT spill, uh, skills and then uh, go into uh, web design, app design. It's a three uh, part courses. So first is very basic, then second is a, a basic web design, app design, and the third course are really for the people that want to go into deeply into the whole web design, app design. So we hope we we, uh, we connect them afterwards to the job market. Um, then there is the International Organization for Migration. Uh, they're not working in Hargeisa, but they're working in Borama. I hope I pronounce it right so everybody will understand. Yeah? Not bad. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, I hope it's understandable. Yeah, okay. And they're working with the organization SOSTA and they set up a job center where youth can find information about training. They provide training and they also organize internships. Uh, within uh, businesses, but also within uh, institutions. And then lastly, we are um, uh, Oxfam, and we're working together with Shuraku. 
um, Lee is going to talk about it more. And we're working with Hava Yoko. Hava Yoko is going to train also young people in employment skills. And um, they're going to work on a favorable environment. So that's really, in a nutshell, the whole uh, project. There's one last slide just to tell you where we are. We started in January, but that was to select partners, get in contract with the partners and everything. So it took a long time to, to take off. We all, all the partners are in selecting or finalizing the selecting stage. Uh, Shiraku started the selection and you were fine. everybody found their, their uh, opening uh, in, the, in the, how do you call it, pocket? Production pocket. IOM started a job center. They're up and running. Haga Bits is in the finalization of the selection of the students, and they're starting to train 25 students in the first week of November. Uh, Hapa Yoko is on the moment finalizing the first selection of students to get them trained in employability skills. And NOVH uh, Ventures shortlisted uh, 61 application and started last week uh, the first training of the boot camp of 15 of them. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. I will leave some of the one pages that are uh, leaving these details on that desk. There are not a lot of them, so please take them if you're really interesting. And um, I will give some more to Shurak. Thank you all very much. Um, one of the things we've tried to do at our forums is have this donor panel, the Implementing Partners panel, so that each of the programs can talk about what they're doing. We think that it makes for a much uh, better cooperative environment for parties to be able to see you know, in succession what's going on and kind of size up how to begin these programs. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about Scirocco and then explain our work in progress uh, project. Um, so first of all, for those of you who don't know much about Scirocco, we have a threefold mission, or at least we engage with, uh, we intend to connect MSMEs to partners, suppliers, uh, finance sources. This kind of a thing is our connecting uh, mission. Uh, we also catalyze investment. So most know us for actually putting together uh, um, evaluations, doing due diligence, packaging a business for investment. And the end result is to create jobs. So that's basically our mission. We're part of a peace building foundation, for those of you who don't know. But we're part of the One Earth Future Foundation out of the US. And our, our, our core mandate is um, uh, addressing the root causes of violence and uh, creating a more peaceful society. So that's why we do what we do. Scirocco focuses specifically on the private sector. There are other programs within the One Earth Future Foundation, like the Secure Fisheries Project, which will be in the uh, one of the panels, um, Oceans Beyond Piracy. We have projects in other parts of the world as well. So why do we do this? It's because we believe that a responsible private sector um, creates jobs, contributes to economic development, stimulates uh, civic participation, and, and can support, if it's responsible, effective governance. And that also creates a flywheel that facilitates economic growth. So once you engage that, it can lead to greater peace and stability, preferably. So Scirocco engages in a number of work streams. Um, we uh, facilitate investment, which most of you know. We support good governance. We convene stakeholders, like we're doing here. We advance market research, as you saw yesterday in the report. We do our best to strengthen sectors, as you saw in the Renewable Energy Forum, and we share lessons learned. Um, all of the information that's coming from this and our other forums are on our website. You can go to the agenda and review, watch videos, listen to sessions, uh, get collateral materials. And our whole uh, attempt is to make sure these aren't one and done events, that they are knowledge share events. Um, some of the things that we've done is we manage funds. We have a family foundation fund that we, home, that we manage for our sister foundation, uh, the Agri-Food Fund. We've contributed to the Somali Land Youth Enterprise Fund. Um, uh, we've done revolving retail credit extension facility with local retailers. And uh, the, Im the impact fund that we announced yesterday, the Powering Progress Fund, is our latest with the Hopshill. And we do uh, many co-investments with banks as well. 
Um, we're in the, pro the process right now of doing a feasibility on the credit guarantee scheme, which will be hopefully forthcoming in the next uh, uh, six months. Um, we've hosted numerous conferences and do research. Um, we're doing some support with uh, business associations. We have a MOU with SIP, the Center for International Private Enterprise, who is here today and will be in the uh, session on um, associations. And then we're also working on a credit framework. Most of our, all of our due diligence materials are set up in a way to provide thorough due diligence, understand the business strengths and weaknesses, and also we're piloting a credit, uh, a credit um, evaluation uh, process that looks at the traditional approach that Somalis take towards um, accessing credit and the formal approach. So this is a little bit of our statistics that uh, we'll show. Um, since our inception in 2013 on the ground, we've facilitated through the various funds 7.4 million plus. Um, our por portfolio at risk, which means um, businesses that are running at 30 days or later is at 5.8%, but the loan loss ratio, meaning total write-offs or bad debt, is only 0.8%, which tells a story to the market, which is you can get safe investment, you can have secure investment, in Somaliland, if you do the due diligence right, we can't fund everyone, and and businesses aren't always ready for funding. We've managed three funds, brokered um, um, 79 plus deals. Um, the estimated job creation is 1,710. Those are jobs that are declared that will be created, and then we have to, of course, see over the life of the business if those are created. Um, the distribution is among you know Somaliland, Puntland, and South Central, and then. We have deals per sector, which I won't go into detail on, but there's, um, I think we're actually more than that now because we have some transportation uh, deals we've done now too, but uh, it's 12, 13 sectors. So we're looking at merit-worthy businesses. Our whole approach is, it, each, there are many sectors that are worthy, but you really have to look at the businesses that are ready for finance. And so we've really tried to focus on that. And then risk sharing, as others have talked about, which is really important. Uh, the ultimate intent of a lot of the donor matching programs is to offset risk. Um, we tend to do it as much as we can with investment and um, some grants sometimes, but usually less grants. So these are our contacts. Um, of course, you know Abdi, Abdi Dole. In fact, the Scirocco staff that are in here, I don't know how many are here. Could anybody from of Scirocco OEF raise your hand? Yeah, you got it. Okay, so these are some of our staff around. So if you want to talk to them, we do. We do have staff uh, also in Garraway and in um, Mogadishu. So we uh, it was announced that we've become a partner. We've joined the consortium with Oxfam. Uh, we're going to assist in one of the one of the pieces of this. We think it fits on what we do. So it's tailored business development services to scale employment of women and youth. So it's about the, it's the work in progress uh, uh, project. Our piece is going to be selecting 10 SMEs that will go through a series of activities to strengthen their business. Now, these are existing businesses that have employed, that have the potential to scale employment. And it will focus on very core BDS services. And we'll have flyers for this in the back later. Um, who should apply? Um, privately owned businesses that have been in business at least a year or more. Um, and you're either expanding or diversifying. So if you have a business, you're an experienced business, but you want to open up a new line of business, you could be an applicant. And then we'll go into and the depth and how to get you to the next phase. Um, we want to have businesses that are, that are employing between 10 and 250 and then have a potential to scale. And that they also need specific either financing or BDS um, training. So it's a little bit of a similar project to what's being done in other uh, programs, but with a little more of a twist. So um, so what they'll get is uh, there'll be a beginning two-day workshop on core BDS topics. Then there will be a training module series, which will be for small groups. that will go into core topics um, on how to run a business, accounting, uh, uh, different things that, you know, marketing, those sorts of things that are kind of basic business skills. Then there will be a one-on-one -on -one consulting and mentorship, which will go into detail for, for those who um, are, are selected. Then we'll do some tailored BDS technical support. So what we intend to do is go deep into the single business and go all the way through to eliminate all the barriers that would eventually then bring them to an access to finance event. And those of you who know us know that we do that through 
our regular course of business through pitch rings and forums like this, um, through introductions, through co-lending, introducing to funds. Okay, so how to apply? You would send an expression of interest. We, we just came into this consortium lately, like, like literally in the last few weeks. So we're just launching this now. The first round deadline will be October 15th, but that's first round. So if you're interested, send an email expression of interest to workinprogress at shiraco.org or find Abdi. For those of you who haven't yet called Abdi because he's constantly getting calls, get his number, call him, or talk to Sarah or others and just express your interest and we'll send you. We're actually going to put a link on our website which will send you to uh, the application process. Okay? And, and that's it. Okay, so Abdi, I know we're running a little bit short, but yeah. uh, very quickly, we've gone through the World Bank project, which is SCORE, and the various uh, pillars of that. We've talked about the USAID Gale project, which uh, gets deeply into ag and fishing, et cetera. We've talked about, um, Judith has talked about uh, the work of UNDP with women. Um, and we've had PIMS uh, talk about the value chain, and then also work in progress through Oxfam. So if you have. Yeah, we'll take actually, we'll take, because of the time, we'll take two, three questions quickly uh, to the panels. And then we'll go to the next section. And if you, if you could, please, if you have a question, go right to a question. If you want to have comments to the individual programs, please find the person and talk with them. That's yeah, you can do work. Yeah, later on. Yeah. First question. It's no question. Yeah, Awal. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was a very interesting presentation from all of our. Projects who are working in line with the BSG4. Uh, uh, um, as far as the sustainability and the knowledge transfer concerned, much of these projects is when they end up and close. The, um, we always struggle with, the, with how are we going to continue? How are we? What are, what are the legacy uh, in terms of continuity of that? Uh, uh, maybe, um, for example, the SME or maybe uh, um, uh, market development. So you always need somebody who can continue, particularly from the public sector. So if I might uh, give uh, an ask um, if uh, any of these projects are thinking about how are they going to make this project sustainable, what are the legacies behind this stage? Thank you for the presentation. Um, I was thinking there are many stakeholders here. You see UNDP, World Bank, Chiraco. Um, I was wondering how do you work together in terms of networking and making sure that things don't get duplicated and that you learn from each other so that we don't have different organizations running. Another question is maybe for World Bank. Uh, as it was mentioned, there are structural problems in the country in terms of infrastructure. Uh, how are you supporting the government and those big infrastructure problems that will help these small enterprises? I will give a chance to the panelists to ask those two questions. The first question from Awale is the sustainability of the projects. He's going to answer that question. Of the donor projects. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sustainability, I can, and we, of course, we are also thinking about how to make our uh, support support sustainability sustainable, but also how do we make the results sustainable? So there are two questions already. Um, I can tell you for the high high bits, for example, it's a school that's going to be set up with funds. From this project work in progress, but it's going to be uh, in a three years. It has to be um, sustainable itself, or has to be independent from the uh, funding of the project. And it's a whole support that the Hargabits is getting from Butterfly Works as well. So that's one thing. Um, if I can 
can pass you the mic to talk about the results of the survey. So as far as Sharaco is concerned, we think the best way to be sustainable is to encourage your business to engage with local um, finance agents. So we try and co-finance with local banks. Uh, we're doing the Powering Progress Fund, so it's, it's tying into a local agent bank. And then also we um, provide due diligence on the business to go deep and give them feedback as to where we evaluate the business isn't uh, a viable or may have problems. So the way we see it, it working is into the market. And so our, our whole idea is to retire projects into the market. And then we work with the governance piece. And those of you who have worked with um, Chiraco know that our family foundation commitments are multi-year. Uh, many of the terms of our um, loans are up to five years. So we're looking at more of a long-term approach. Awala, thank you for that question regarding um, sustainability, which is, is a crucial point and a crucial issue. Um, speaking for the Catalytic Fund in particular, one of the things we look for when we are assessing or evaluating projects or when we're looking at the applications that we receive from the general business community, fundamentally we look um, for things such as economic growth impact, uh, how many jobs is that particular individual, that business going to be able to create well, one of the key things um, that we're slowly shifting towards is sustainability. You're absolutely correct in that um, a lot of these projects, a lot of these businesses that we tend to fund, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, <coughs> wither away um, when they don't have the support of um, the donor or the, the implementing partner who's, who's carrying out the project. And I don't only mean financial support. I'm also talking about technical assistance. Because what we want to do is we want to bring or put forward the business and leave it in a state that it is sustainable so that we can look at it 12 months, 24 months onwards when the project completes, that it's still going, that it's thriving, that it's employing more people, and that uh, it's going from strength to strength. So you've, you've highlighted a very, very important topic there, and thank you for that. For the SMEF, maybe I'll speak for the SMEF and sustainability. Uh, I, I explained that the, the core of the work that we'll be doing is, first of all, building the capacity of private you know, BDS providers, and then linking them to SMEs who have gaps, technical gaps, or business services gaps, and so on. Eventually, what will happen is that uh, for where we are very successful technical um, assistance has been provided and the business has been seen to, to, to grow or succeed, then we expect that businesses will know that they can benefit from this service. Uh, the PDS providers are providing a, a service for which they are supposed to be paid. So in the course of time, what we'll be building is, is, is a market where we can tell SMEs that we have this capability, you have uh, a, a right to choose, you have a solar business, uh, we have people who can provide you technical training in solar. This is the way you transact, but the transaction is basically how you agree. It's really private. So we expect once we demonstrate that this works, then our exit will continue working. That's, that's the way the model is. Um, I think in many ways the two questions are very similar um, because the sustainability to the, our activities to be sustainable we do need to work together. Um, from our perspective, I'm pleased to say that uh, we work with, and we've had discussions with many of our partners on this table, um, and those uh, discussions are continuing. Next month will be taking place in October, beginning of October, and we'd like partners to join us again um, to work out not just really how we can collaborate. We want to make sure that we don't duplicate our efforts, and there are some similarities certainly between us, um, but also information sharing. So whatever we're developing, we need to make sure that our partners here are familiar. If we're working with certain um, business service providers, we're sharing that information with our partners so that they're not undertaking exactly the same activities to identify the same people. Um, we also want to share some information about the people that we intend to work with and the sectors that we're working in. Um, there's always more that can be done, but I think the willingness of everybody on this panel is there. And um, we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that we share the information and, and work closely together.
Thank you, Alex. We will bank questions later. Okay, another question from infrastructure. Uh, so, uh, learn from the map for wrecking targeting infrastructure, but they have done uh, a little bit. Uh, is the overall World Bank project so correct targeting support sector, and the work of Berber of course, uh, have been working very important the last six years and uh, now all the opportunities to be uh, trading in my uh, area. Um, we also, of course, did have it in front of I was explaining before, uh, trying to mobilize link sectors, not just dealing with uh, direct investment, not just dealing with uh, uh, the improvements of the performance of the enterprises in France. We're also trying to use the Public Financial Link Fund for the financial sector and therefore to strengthen financial infrastructure. Um, and then uh, the individual uh, grantees, the individual projects that have been funded, uh, to some extent also uh, relate really to infrastructure. For example, we put a lot of funding into solid waste management. And uh, some of those projects have been quite successful. And uh, one in particular uh, is doing a pretty good job in uh, Hargeza. And I think that that's one of the major infrastructure uh, gaps that, that, that exist. And we've also put uh, funding into the energy sector, alternative energy, both solar and wind. Uh, those projects have been uh, problematic, but uh, we've put about a million dollars out of the previous fund into uh, solar energy and wind energy. And so that, that, that is a part of the energy sector. So we've used capital funds to capitalize not only uh, manufacturing, agricultural processing, and mining, we've also used it to try to activate uh, areas of, of interest. And we'll continue to do so. Yes, thank you, David. Actually, the whole purpose of taking a market system approach is to correct the uh, market failures and to address the sustainability issue. So, why, why all these projects are taking a market development approach is to make the market work, uh, which is good actually for functional to value changes, not the technology. Not the technological aspect alone, but the relationship with the actors, with the suppliers, what kind of uh, mechanism should be uh, used to produce the change in the market? Everybody should have interest at this as well. So, thinking the business solution and the uh, uh, role of uh, the suppliers, with the suppliers, all this should have a value for a decision that is thinking to separate the market. I think that's all it tells you. I was going to say really quickly on the question of um, of collaboration. The, the very reason we're doing this at this at this forum is for this very reason. So there is collaboration, um, as was said by Alan. Um, we we at Sharaco have had communications, conversations, engagement with all these projects um, at different times, and so we do try and identify who's doing what. Uh, Multi-stakeholder collaboration is never easy, and donor coordination is a classic development problem. So. You're not the only ones experiencing it. It's not malicious. It's not for lack of effort. Um, and, but it is an acknowledgment that the more we can do, and some of what we do in our other forums, we put together slides saying, to the extent that we can collaborate, we probably do achieve more together. Um, but it, it is one of those things that's very, very difficult. The truth is, there are, is a lot of need. Meeting that need, sometimes you have a lot of efforts going in, throwing in uh, projects that do somewhat overlap. But uh, I think this is a step in the right direction. Um, and then I think maybe we'll let people respond to that very quickly and then we need to close the panel to the collaboration. Yeah, so that's uh, thank you a lot. Uh, I want to ask, uh, I have two questions, uh, one for uh, Shurafo and one uh, for Banner. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Bushrafo uh, that made possible to come together uh, different agencies. Uh, what I ask is, would you continue uh, to make a coordination or sometime uh, in cooperation or together some, uh, some time in order to continue uh, 
in collaboration with uh, inter in interagencies because we witnessed it over the past decades. Each uh, agency runs uh, only it is old, and that makes uh, many agencies in the country less impact. That's uh, my question to Rafa if, uh, if we continue to this effort. Another question to, to the panel uh, is that uh, there is a disparity in, uh, in funding profiling in the regions of Somaliland. As so, uh, for the past uh, 20 years, uh, most of the funding funders uh, will be invest, invested in major towns, uh, mainly in Hargeisa. And that posted uh, many people or rural or productive people to immigrate uh, many rural areas and, and fill in the capital city. And that's uh, one of the major constraints that make uh, contribution in, uh, in development or uh, economic distribution in the region is or location is. Uh, have you any strategies about this method? Your plans, other regions in Somaliland. Um, regarding your first question, in terms of networking, I think we do network. Um, certainly, we network within agencies or programs that are relevant to each other or that complement each other. And today is an example of when we're networking. Um, Sharaka has invited us to, to present and to be on the panel and to talk about our individual projects. So um, uh, I think that's going to continue. Um, with regards to your um, question regarding, I think you said um, distribution of funds and there's a disparity across the region and so forth. I think uh, <coughs> there is an issue. I agree with you. Although um, I think that's really more sometimes perception um, rather than reality. Uh, if I specifically talk about the grant program, um, one of the things that we're doing for the Somali Business Catalytic Fund is that when we do go through the, the short list of um, grantees or applicants that we want to give grants to, we do take into account demographics. When I say demographics, I mean we look at gender, we look at regions, and we look at sectors and make sure that there is an even distribution so that the majority of grants don't go to the likes of uh, Hergeso or Merodice, for that matter. Um, and what you'll actually find um, is that uh, there was a relatively, not necessarily even split, but certainly uh, a significant split between the regions in the previous program of the uh, Somaliland uh, Business Fund and the former um, Partnership for Economic Growth Program uh, from USAID. So, uh, you know, I agree with you, but it's really more perception. Um, if I talk specifically about, for example, PEG, uh, which is the Partnership for Economic Growth Program, I used to work for PEG, and uh, we had 16, sorry, pardon, we had 13 grants uh, in the, the second round or in the final round of that program, and every region was represented. So from Sanag to Seoul to Marodice to Audal and uh, Sahil as well. Um, so Every, every state or every region received one or two grants. And uh, if you don't believe me, you can actually look it up. So um, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to focus on that and make sure that there is an even split. But you have to always remember that, you know, Hargeisa is the capital city. The majority of the people live here, and the majority of ideas and applications come from here. So you can't evenly split. You have to really give grants to those organizations where we believe we can get money for value, sorry, value for money in terms of uh, making sure that we can create as many jobs as possible because the, the, main, the main issue for the World Bank is to create jobs and to create, um, um, to increase or as hard to say, to, to, to make the economic uh, impact of this country go up. Now following up uh, regarding and business fund, not to fact in the first round, there was uh, quite a lot of concentration in Hargeisa, in Hargeisa uh, region, uh, uh, around uh, this area. Uh, probably as much as 60% uh, of the grants were actually in this area. But in the second round, it's fallen to 
was somewhere around 40%. So there was actually progress during that project. So to some extent, to begin with, because it was easiest to operate within this area, the grants tended to go to this area, but in the latter half 